Okay, so today we're really diving deep into something special, education, but not the kind we're used to, you know, with desks and a blackboard and all that. Right. We're going to India to explore a school, get this, it's specifically designed for kids from nomadic families. Wow. Yeah, a school without walls, can you imagine? I mean, that's incredible. A school without walls? How does it even work? That's what we're going to find out. And the really cool part is we get to hear directly from the founder, you know, about their journey creating this amazing place. Oh, that's fantastic. Hearing it straight from the source, that's always the best. So we're talking about a school that's completely intertwined with the nomadic way of life. Exactly. It's not just about adjusting to a lifestyle. It's about embracing it, making it part of the curriculum, everything. Yeah, it's about recognizing that education shouldn't be one size fits all, right? It needs to be as diverse as the communities it serves. I'm really curious to see how they pull that off. Me too. And it all started with a mother, her son, and a real aha moment. Oh, I love those moments, the ones that kind of shake things up and make you see things in a whole new light. Exactly. So she realized traditional schooling just wasn't working for her son. He wasn't thriving. But then they went on a trip and she saw how much he learned just by exploring, observing, being curious. It's amazing how powerful those experiences can be, right? When kids are free to follow their own curiosity, they just soak up knowledge like sponges. Absolutely. And that's when she had that aha moment. Like maybe there's a different way, a better way to teach and learn. It makes you think, how often are those aha moments overlooked? Like we just accept the way things are instead of questioning, you know, is this really working? Totally. But starting a school like this, especially in a community that really values tradition, it couldn't have been easy. Yeah, I can imagine there were some raised eyebrows, some skepticism, like why change what's always been done? Exactly. It's like, how do you convince families to embrace such a radically different approach? It's all about building trust. Right. Especially in a close-knit community like that, showing them that this new way can be just as good, if not better. And that's what happened, you know, as the kids started coming home, not just happy, but like, demonstrably more knowledgeable, it changed everything. It's the proof in the pudding, yeah. right? Seeing those tangible results is what wins people over. And that's what built the foundation for everything that followed, for this amazing school without walls. But what about the curriculum? Right, because it's not a school without learning, right? What do the kids actually do? Yeah, they've taken this whole idea of blending traditional knowledge with modern education to a whole new level. Okay, I'm hooked. Tell me more. Well, they recognize that children don't come to school as blank slates, you know? They've got experiences, they've got knowledge, and this school uses that, builds on it. It's like they're saying, hey, what you already know matters. Yeah. That's so powerful for a kid to hear, right? To feel seen and heard for who they are and what they bring to the table. Mm -hmm. It really does, and it makes their curriculum so unique. It's like their lives become the textbook. Okay, now you're just making me even more curious. Give me an example. So imagine this. A child brings in their favorite breakfast food, right? Something they eat every day. Okay, sounds pretty normal so far. Right, but then, bam, it becomes a lesson on the science behind the ingredients, the nutritional value, even the cultural significance of the food. Wow, that's amazing. They take something so ordinary and turn it into a learning opportunity. Exactly. And it's not just food. They also use foraging trips, you know, going out and gathering plants and stuff. Yeah. They use that to teach about botany, ecology, even the medicinal properties of plants. It's like a whole world becomes their classroom. Right. And speaking of the world being their classroom, you know what really struck me? They don't just exist within the community. They really embrace it, bring it into the school. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Involving the whole community. That's so important. But how does that work with, you know, families constantly on the move? Yeah, that's the question, right? How do you even begin to create a sense of routine and structure when the whole idea of school is so fluid? It really challenges our traditional notions of education, doesn't it? It totally does. But here's the thing. They seem to have figured it out. Okay, tell me more because I'm stumped. How do they do it? Well, for starters, their attendance rate is through the roof. Really? with families migrating all the time. That's incredible. Right. You'd think it'd be a challenge, but it's the opposite. So what's the secret? How do they keep the kids engaged and coming back for more? 
From what I gathered, they build their schedule around the community's movements. You know, like they'll set up in a location where families are gathering for a few weeks, a few months, however long it takes. So they're going where the kids are. That's brilliant. Exactly. It's like they're meeting them where they are, literally. It's like they've cracked the code to making education work within a nomadic lifestyle. That's incredible. It really is. And they don't just do this with, you know, where they hold school, but also with what they teach. They're always incorporating the surrounding environment into their lessons. Give me an example. Pay me a picture. So one day they might be learning about fractions while dividing up a harvest, right? Applying math to a real world situation. Practical math. I love it. And the next day they might be studying local wildlife during a nature walk. It's like they've turned their entire world into a living, breathing classroom. Exactly. And because of that, they develop this really deep understanding of their environment, the challenges, the resources, everything. It's a completely different way of seeing the world, learning about the world, not from a textbook, but by experiencing it firsthand. And they're not just learning about their environment, but also from their heritage. They incorporate traditional songs, stories, crafts. It's really amazing to see. It's like they've found a way to preserve their cultural identity while also embracing education. That's a powerful combination. It is. And it made me realize they're not just preserving the past. They're also preparing these kids for the future. How so? Well, they incorporate things like financial literacy, conflict resolution, even digital skills, you know, things that are essential no matter where life takes them. So they're not shying away from the modern world. They're finding ways to bridge that gap between tradition and progress. Exactly. And they're doing it in a way that empowers these kids to navigate both worlds, the traditional and the modern. It's like they're creating this beautiful tapestry, weaving together the threads of their heritage with the tools and knowledge they need to thrive in the 21st century. It's really remarkable, and it makes you wonder what we can learn from this school. You know, even if we don't live nomadic lives ourselves, like what can we take away from all of this and maybe even apply to our own approaches to education, to learning in general? That's the beauty of these kinds of stories, right? Hmm. They might take place in a very specific context, but the underlying principles they often have this universality to them, you know? It's like they've tacked into something really fundamental about how we learn best, no matter who we are, where we come from. Exactly. It reminds us that learning isn't limited to, you know, textbooks and classrooms. It's about fostering that sense of wonder, that natural curiosity we all have, you know, and then encouraging exploration, finding those connections between what we learn and how it applies to our lives. Because it has to mean something. Right. It does. And the founder actually said something that really resonated with me. They said, we don't teach children about the world. We teach them how to learn from the world. It's subtle, but it's such a powerful shift in perspective. It really is. And it kind of reminds me of that saying, it's not about filling a bucket. It's about lighting a fire. It's about sparking that love of learning, you know, giving them the tools and the drive to keep asking questions, keep exploring. Absolutely. And what's even more amazing is they're doing all of this without fancy technology or expensive resources, right? They've created this incredible learning environment simply by harnessing the power of their community, their own creativity, and of course, a deep, deep respect for the natural world. It's like they're showing us that sometimes the simplest solutions are the most profound. They've stripped away all the bells and whistles, all the distractions, and gone back to the core of what matters cultivating that love of learning. And it's clearly working. It really is. You know, the founder shared stories of some children who are really hesitant to engage in, you know, more traditional schooling. But in this environment, this dynamic, hands-on environment, they're thriving. They're asking questions, making those connections we were talking about, and really discovering their passions. You know, it's amazing to see. It really speaks to the power of creating an educational experience that resonates with each child's unique needs and learning style. It's not one size fits all. And this school is a perfect example of that. And they're not just fostering a love of learning, but they're also instilling a sense of, I don't know, empowerment in these kids, a belief in their own potential. Like they can make a difference in the world. Absolutely. It's about showing them that their voices matter, their ideas have value, and that they have the power to shape their own futures. You know, this whole experience learning about this school, it's really been inspiring. It's like they've created this blueprint for a more holistic approach to education. I agree. One that values diversity, encourages collaboration, and views the world as a classroom without walls. 
It really makes you realize that we all have a role to play in shaping the future of education, whether it's supporting these innovative initiatives like, you know, advocating for change in our own communities or just encouraging the children in our lives to never stop questioning, never stop exploring. So because education shouldn't just be about, you know, memorizing facts and figures. It should be about empowering individuals to think critically, to dream big and to create a world that's better than the one they inherited.